Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about three insider secrets that the College of Policing just don't want you to know. Actually, number three is one that's going to be really surprising for you. And it's because actually the College of Policing don't even know it themselves. So here we go, folks. Here's my three insider secrets. Oh, by the way, you might be thinking, why is he an insider? Well, I've been working in the police sector now for 37 years. I've been coaching and supporting people to succeed in the police recruitment process, specialist interviews, promotion boards now for 27 years. I was a serving officer for 28 years in three different forces. I continue to work with police forces. I've worked for and with the College of Policing on four occasions during my career. This is what I do, and I know exactly what works. So pin your ears back, folks. Here they are. The three things that they just don't want you to know. The first one for the online assessment centre, you're going to do an interview. This is where you're going to be uploading answers so that they can be assessed by an assessor at a later date. That's not really an interview, by the way. But the, the thing they don't want you to know is that it's absolutely not a test of your motivation, your values, your what's inspired you your enthusiasm for the job. No, this is just about ticking boxes. So I've already worked out what the likely questions are going to be, how well the College of Policing tell you what values and competencies you're going to get assessed against. And it's really easy for me to work backwards. I've been doing this for years now. I know how they think. And I can utilise the behaviours in each one of the values and competencies to work out what the supplementary points are going to be. So once we know that, we can just construct our answers from our past lives, experiences that we've had. It doesn't have to be a time when you've changed the world, just a time when you've changed the world a little bit, but you've demonstrated the behaviours. So, for example, if we look at um, a question here from the value of public service, uh, please, can you tell me about a time when you've communicated effectively in order to resolve a problem? It's not about the severity of the problem. This is about the process that you've gone through, the behaviour you've, you've demonstrated and how you've actually communicated effectively. I'm reading all of this off my guide and there's all the supplementary points that you need to cover. Cover all of those and you're going to pass. Use my structure that I show you on my online courses. Check the links below to find out more about those and you will nail it. So many of my clients in the past have walked out with 100%. The majority of them are getting 80% plus in their interview. So this works. And the College of Policing don't want you to know how easy it actually is. Just been speaking to someone today from West Midlands Police who's an uh, internal candidate. And they are filling their heads full of all sorts of magic about what they need to learn and understand from the CVF before they can even attempt this interview. They just don't want you to know how easy it is. All right, the second thing, the written exercise. They tell you in the guidance that you don't need to have any knowledge of policing, or the processes, the procedures. The big secret is they then give you a two hour written exercise, although they say you've got 40 minutes to do it in. You've actually got two hours. I don't get that. Why don't you just say you've got two hours to do it in? So you've got two hours to do this written exercise in. You don't need to know anything about policing. They're giving you a big problem in a community to do with antisocial behaviour and criminal damage, a lack of trust in the police, a lack of police legitimacy, a vulnerable person who's been the victim of hate-motivated crime that needs investigating still. Um, and they're going to ask you questions about how you're going to work with the community and partner agencies, how you're going to engage with them. What are the different issues and considerations that you need to have? You don't need to have any knowledge of policing. Come on, College of Policing. <laughs> Why did you write that? It's clearly not true. Listen, I was a neighbourhood inspector for eight years. The sort of skills that you need to be able to do those sort of things, are they, they take time. They don't come overnight. Now, you might be able to pass it just by sort of cobbling your way through by uh, looking at the CVF and maybe sort of look a little bit in terms of what you write. But I think you'd much rather know exactly what you need to write. And it's those eight years of neighbourhood 
policing as an inspector and doing work with the European Union on a big three-year project to improve problem solving and community engagement in Central and Eastern Europe, speaking at conferences, still working with police forces on this theme, it gives you exactly what you need to score 100% on your written exercise. Now, number three, the third secret they don't want you to know about. Actually, they don't even know this themselves. So the College of Policing for the third exercise in the Online Assessment Centre, which is the briefing, have set you a task where you need to talk for a total of 36 minutes, answering 12 questions. You've got three minutes to answer each one of those questions. One minute to think about it, three minutes to answer it, then it rolls on to the next one. The scenario is updated on two occasions. So like I said, a total of 12 questions, 36 minutes worth of talking about how you would deal with a noisy party. That's it. You're on patrol with a colleague and you come across a noisy party and you can see through the window that some young people who appear to be drinking alcohol. I don't get it. <laughs> Why would the police deal with that? Google it. Test it out. Have a look on Google. Just Google. Do the police deal with noisy parties and see what it brings up. Every force is going to tell you in their frequently asked questions that they don't deal with noisy parties. All right, you might be saying, but they're drinking alcohol. There's no law that says you can't drink alcohol in your own house. There's no law that says you can't drink alcohol in someone else's house. If you're 16, 17, 15. Actually, it's perfectly legal to drink alcohol from the age of six upwards. It's not advised, of course, but how many of you, come on, hands up, how many of you have been to a party when you were 16, 17 where there was alcohol there? Yeah, me too. Did the police turn up? No. Would you have expected the police to turn up? No. If they had turned up and started dealing with it, 36 minutes worth of talking about how they'd deal with it, would you have been surprised? Yes. Look, it's bonkers. <laughs> Why are they setting you this task? The police do not deal with noisy parties. This is how it goes if you call the police about a noisy party. Hello, please, can I help you? Yes, I'd like to report a noisy party. Uh, we don't deal with noisy parties. You need to report that to the council. Bye, dink, that's it. But you can't say that, can you? Because you've got 36 minutes worth of talking to do. So what we need to do, the big secret that they're not even aware of is that we need to create in our mind the College of Policing's La La Land where noisy parties is the biggest priority for the police to deal with. Where young people drinking alcohol in their own house. Whoa, we can't have that. Listen, <laughs> if you're with your parents or with adults and you're sitting down for a meal in a pub and you're 16, you can order cider, beer and wine. <laughs> so I don't get it. Why, why are they creating this nonsense for you to deal with? Special constables and PCSOs really struggle with this because they're scratching their heads thinking, eh? <laughs> you don't need any knowledge of policing. Yeah, you definitely don't need any knowledge of policing for this because it's just not a police matter. Anyway, you have to put yourself in their head and that's what we're going to do in our exercises. When we practice this webinar, I struggle with it, by the way, but we, we put ourselves in the minds of the uh, exercise developers from the College of Policing, where in their heads, in their research that they've not done, clearly not done, the police actually deal with noisy parties and deal with some young people, 16, 17 year olds, drinking alcohol in, at the noisy party. Please. Anyway, there you go, folks. <laughs> what are you thinking, College of Policing? Anyway. <laughs> What this invariably does is it makes it really easy to pass the online assessment centre. And so for some forces still, this is all you have to do. Unbelievably, all, this is all you have to do to join the police. Do this online assessment centre. For forces like uh, Avon and Somerset, Wiltshire, the Metropolitan Police. Okay, they make you do two role plays, but they don't ask you any questions in an interview. West Midlands Police. This is all you have to do. And apart from vetting medical and fitness, where the hardest question you're gonna get asked is what's your inside leg measurement, this is all you need to do to join the police. I think it's an absolute scandal myself, but whilst they've made it so easy for you to join, you might as well take advantage of it. Crazy, I know, 
Um, do I disagree with it? Absolutely. Do I believe it should be harder in a bigger test of your values? Absolutely. But the golden rule applies. Those who hold the gold make the rules and the College of Policing have made the rules. So we might as well follow them and ensure that we pass with a score of over 90%. Check the links below, folks, to find out how to get that over 90% score. And please do like and subscribe this video because every other day I'm dropping a video like this to help you secure the best pass that you possibly can in the recruitment process. Not just for the recruitment process, I've got a group of over 400 police officers now who I'm supporting with promotion boards, specialist interviews. It's what I love to do. So come and join me. I look forward to seeing you in the webinars. Check the links below to find links to all my courses and I'll catch you with you soon, folks. Catch you with you next time. Bye bye.